morning to you. I am Super Derek, and welcome back to today's JRPG Weekly Update. And guys, I think you'll want to stick around for this one because we've got a bit of news to talk about today in the JRPG world. A few things have happened over the last week. Uh, I mean, Final Fantasy VII Remake has basically taken over the entire world, and I guess so has COVID-19. But aside from that, <laughs> we had a few other headlines to talk about. So let's just jump into that, I guess. So, Yoshihiro Kondo, uh, he's kind of the head over at Falcom. He ended up dropping a few bombshells during an interview with Gamatsu that I'm going to link to down below the, the whole uh, article, which you can check out. But uh, some of the highlights that I really took away from that were regarding some interest in bringing like trails from Zero and trails of Azure over to the West on the, on the PlayStation 4. Uh, he expressed interest in like a 3D uh, polygonal, you know, remake or remaster of the Trails in the Sky games. And also uh, confirmed, I guess, and this is kind of the big one, confirmed that East 9 is currently in the process of uh, being brought over westward. So he didn't say where in the process that is, if they're actively doing that or if they're like engaged in entertaining offers from from other companies to do this or not. But East 9, it is going to come west westward, which is perfect. I know that a lot of people, especially East fans, are used to being burned uh, when it comes to getting things localized. And it's really good that we pretty early on in the process getting confirmation that we will be getting East 9 Monstrum Knox here eventually on PlayStation 4 in the West. So we can look forward to that. Also, there was a release date update that we did end up getting to, to talk about here. Um, Amazon's MMORPG New World ended up getting delayed until uh, August 25th. Now, I, I make no uh, secret of the fact that I'm not really much of a JRPG, or I'm sorry, MMORPG fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a JRPG fan, but MMORPGs are definitely not exactly my wheelhouse. I've said this for a few reasons, essentially. I personally think that they could be the kind of thing that would suck me in and then I would never see the light of day again. I feel like I might be one of those people and as a result, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sticking away from those because, uh, you know, I got other stuff to do. <laughs> that's that's really the thing is they, they kind of scare me. But anyways, that's a subject for a whole other day. This game is being made by Amazon. I didn't even realize that they were making an MMO, which is pretty nuts, uh, but it's it's cool, I guess. But it's unfortunately being pushed back until August 25th. Currently going to be a PC only. They're also doing a closed beta in july i mean they should at least have decent servers for it you'd think right but anyway they ended up pushing it all the way back till august because uh they were citing you know more more pandemic related stuff which is sort of like i said it's going to be kind of the norm we're probably going to see many updates uh similar like this uh before too long and then in other news somewhat recently there was a trailer that started making some waves uh, out there on the internet for an indie RPG that's being made called Sea of Stars. And uh, and it looked pretty amazing. And this started making some waves when they released this trailer announcing their Kickstarter and stuff. And um, just like as a side note, one of the reasons I didn't talk about this at first is that um, generally speaking, I don't want to make a habit or make a point. I actually actively try not to talk about stuff that is being kickstarted. Uh, just so that I don't feel like I'm opening myself up to where I have to talk about every, every game that's coming to Kickstarter or every game that is being Kickstarted. And I also don't want to get into the business of like endorsing Kickstarters of any kind, you know, because so many Kickstarters just end in products, especially video games, never coming to fruition. And I just really don't want to get in the habit of trying to boost signals out there for Kickstarters in general, but the reason I'm talking about this today is that it does not really require any more boosting, and they've already attracted some pretty important eyes. Most notably here, Yasu Norimitsuda is actually joining the team of Sea of Stars as a guest composer. Yasu Norimitsuda, who you might know from works such as Xenogears, Chrono Cross, Chrono, Chrono Trigger, so... I mean, he's a seasoned veteran, and I'm pretty interested by the actual quote that he uh, that he provided to them here. I want to write music for this game. 
was the feeling I had seeing it convey the nostalgic golden age of the 90s. Although there are still many games being released with this classic style, I don't think players are satisfied with just nostalgia. As seen in their previous game, by adding new systems and ideas to classic formulas, Sabotage Studio breathes fresh new air into their work. Impressed by the respect that they show for past games while at the same time giving players a new way to have fun, I found myself wanting to make a game with everyone at Sabotage Studio. Please look forward to an exciting adventure. End quote. So, that's pretty dope. Matsuda is now involved in this uh, in this indie RPG that has somehow gone viral. It's still a ways off, still a long ways off. But the fact that he's joining the the the, the production at all it speaks volumes for the impression that it made on him. So that's that's definitely just something I, I wanted to talk about. You know, in Super Dark News, I wanted to just kind of. Uh, pass along some really good news from the community here actually and that's that over on friday wood from beat em ups on on youtube a, f a good friend of mine had several guests including myself on the show and i just wanted to say how how awesome it was to be a part of that and we actually uh together as a community accomplished something amazing we raised over ten thousand dollars for the hope from home uh, charity fundraiser so that is just super awesome and I wanted to congratulate Wood on that uh, on on having such an awesome community and and having that that fundraiser goal meet that that was so awesome and it, it was a lot of fun also so uh, if you have missed out on that you can actually find links to still donate to hope from home uh, down in the video's description to help those who are most affected by the current uh, pandemic. In this week's JRPG Weekly Forecast, we have the Vampire the Masquerade quarter, co coterie, Coteries of... I, I don't even know how you pronounce that word. I think it's Coteries of New York. Anyway, it's coming to Xbox One on April 15th, and it's basically already kind of on everything else. Uh, PC, PS4, and N Nintendo Switch. And then there's another indie RPG that's coming out this, uh, this week called Boot Hill Bounties. It's an indie style, I'm sorry, it's an indie made Japanese style spaghetti western themed RPG. Now that's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> it's coming to Nintendo Switch on the 14th and it is currently available on PC. I, I may end up uh, taking a quick look at that for an experience points video. Let me know what you think uh, if you'd be interested in something like that. And uh, as for the day's question of the week, I actually was asked a question by a, a Patreon supporter, uh, Digita. She's a really awesome person, and, and she had a question about what was like the, the saddest RPG that you had ever played. And I didn't really have a really great answer for that, so I wanted to reach out to you guys and see what your input was uh, on on a game that just really got the waterworks going for you, you know? Was there was there a game that just really gut punched you? I There was a few that I can recall off the top of my head. The only game that really has consistently, you know, gotten me all choked up every time I played through it is probably Terranigma, believe it or not. It's, and I don't want to really talk about why, but people who have played it and uh, and finished the game will definitely know kind of why that is. Uh, you know, otherwise there's definitely, I think, um, I, I mean, Earthbound sort of gets me choked up here and there, but it's not because it's like an overly sad story, though I've, I seem to recall Mother 3 being pretty sad. And then also Suikoden 2, you know, that whole story of Pilika, I think, was was pretty um, was pretty touching for sure. But otherwise, I, I, I'm having a, a struggle here trying to pull out a game that was just really just a, a I guess, a downer the whole way through. <laughs> or I don't know, because I see I seem to feel like a lot of RPGs, a lot of JRPGs especially, are just pretty upbeat. So I want to reach out to you guys. What do you think? Are there any RPGs out there that really just, you know, will will really get you, you know, <laughs> get you good? Or uh, I don't know. I I'm interested in seeing what your responses are. But that's about it for this week's JRPG Weekly Update. Not a whole lot of news to talk about, but if you liked what you saw here, make sure you uh, subscribe. And uh, we'll be doing more JRPG Weekly Updates every Monday. And, uh, and I think other reviews are on the way. Yeah. Anyways, 
I am Super Derek, and this has all been news to me. Have a good day, everyone.